With the addition of this guy here, the ReExpert stick line is complete. Today I will go over the complete stick line, including the brand new Stick 500. Welcome to the House of Ham. I am Bob, WV7W, and I am thrilled to be one of the first to show you the Rig Expert Stick 500. The good folks at Rig Expert were kind enough to send this to me so I can share it with you. And they also loaned me this Stick Pro so I can compare the complete line. The Stick 230 I've had for a couple of years now and it has become a staple for my portable ops. And I will start with it since it is the base model and the simplest in features. The others build upon the Stick 230 features. The Stick 230 covers frequencies from 100 kHz to 230 MHz, hence the 230 in the name. It has an e ink display that is very easy to read, even the brightest sunlight, but takes longer to refresh than the LCD display on the Pro. The Stick 230 uses a standard SO239 connector. When you turn on the Stick 230, you are presented with this main screen that has four different functions. The first is the single mode. This function gives you readings for a single frequency, and it has five different screens. The first shows you the SWR and return loss. The second screen shows the impedance, or Z, as well as the series, resistance, and reactance. The third screen shows the impedance and the series inductance and capacitance readings. The fourth screen shows you the magnitude and parallel resistance and reactance. And the final screen shows you the phase angle and the parallel inductance and capacitance readings. Now, the multifunction shows you the best SWR point and a star rating for each band that has at least better than 3 to 1 SWR. And this can give you a quick assessment of your multi-band antenna. The star ratings are shown here between 1.0 and 1.1 is 5 stars. Between 1.1 and 1.15 is 4 stars. Between 1.15 and 1.3 is 3 stars. 1.3 and 1.7 is 2 stars. And 1.7 and 3 is 1 star. I wish that you could customize the star ratings but I don't find that I use this function that much anyhow. Next is the ham function that gives you an SWR plot over each of the ham bands. I find I use this screen quite a lot, as you can get a quick picture of how good the match is on an entire band. Finally, the last function on the main screen is free, which is like the ham screen, but you can set whatever frequency range you want. So if you want to see the SWR across a full HF band, knock yourself out. Keep in mind, though, that it only shows 100 points. So to get an accurate reading in a particular area, you may need to zoom in on it. And this is pretty much all you get with this model. Next, let's look at the Stick Pro. It covers frequencies from 100 kilohertz up to 600 megahertz. The Pro has a color LCD display that is still pretty easy to read in daylight, but not quite as easy as the e-ink if the sun is directly hitting it. It is easier to read if the lighting is dim, though. Now, the Pro has an N-type connector, which is common for UHF and higher frequencies. It has the same main screen as the 230, but it also has two other top-level screens. The second screen has bound, TDR, RNX, and R loss functions. The bound function gives you a quick visual indication whether the SWR is less than the bound that you've set. The next function is TDR, or Time Domain Reflectometer, which is also sometimes called cable radar. Now, TDRs are great for finding a fault in the cable and how far out the cable is that fault. The third function is R and X. This shows the impedance and reactance over a range of frequencies. Now the last item on this page is return loss, which is the ratio of signal power over return coefficient expressed in decibels. This mostly corresponds with SWR, 
but higher numbers are better as where SWR lower numbers are better. The third screen has stub T, CLEN, CIMP, and CLOSS functions. The stub T or stub tuner function is used to measure the quarter wave and half wave resonant frequencies of a stub. The CLEN or cable length function will give you the cable length for a given velocity factor or give you the velocity factor for a known length of cable. The CIMP, I believe, shows the impedance of the coax that is attached. So if you've got 50 ohm cable, it'll show 50 ohms. The last function is C loss, which shows you the loss of a cable in dB at a given frequency. Finally, let's look at the newest members in the stick line, and that is the stick 500. Now this one has the same e-ink display that the stick 230 has, and it also has the SO239 connector, just like the 230. But it covers frequency range from 100 kilohertz to 500 megahertz, hence the name. Now, at first, you may think it has the same features that the Stick 230 has, just the ability to go up to 500 megahertz. And I thought the same thing. But when I went through the screens, you see that it has the same main screen as the other two, but it also has the cable link, stub, and loss screen like the Pro. So it's more than just a Stick 230 with added frequency range. It is truly in between the Stick 230 and Pro line. Now let's briefly talk about the price of these guys. The Stick 230 comes in at $330. The Stick Pro is $450. And the new Stick 500 is $400. So which should you buy? Well, that depends on what you plan on doing. If this is going to be your only analyzer for both shack and portable, I would go with either the Stick 500 or the Pro. If you think you need the advanced features that the Pro offers, I'd go ahead and spend the extra 50 bucks. If not, I think the Stick 500 is the best option for most hams as it covers the most common bands we use. If you do primarily HF and don't want to do cable length and loss calculations, the Stick 230 might be just fine for you. Now, I would use the buy once, cry once philosophy. So think ahead of what you may want to do over the next few years. The bottom line is that any of these are a great choice, so you can't go wrong. And I know a lot of you are wondering, when is the Stick 500 going to be available to purchase? And according to Rig Expert, the Stick 500 should be available at U.S. resellers in a couple of weeks, or by the end of December 2022. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give that like button a whack. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you know when my next video comes out. In the meantime, here's another video you may like. Until next time, 73s.